Hi, Len. Hi, Errol. How are you this, I'm uh, back. this I afternoon? Had a, I had a few problems, but I am back. I know. That's because you use a Macintosh. Or what do they call them? No, Mac, actually not. It's Mac. actually a PC. Oh, it's a, it's PC. a PC. No, that surprises me. Yeah. You have problems with a PC. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so, Errol, Errol, how are you? How are you this afternoon? I'm very good, thanks. All how right. are you down okay, in Texas? Thanks. Yes, all good here in Texas. It's um, it's actually cloudy today. Can you believe it? Uh, but wow. but all good. So <clears throat> so today's webinar, Errol tells me, is a Q and A session. Um, so I'm wondering if everyone's going to ask any questions other than, can I make the audio louder? <laughs> Errol, um, uh, is there any uh, specific topic that you'd like me to discuss in today's webinar um, uh, to get to get the conversation uh, going? Um, well, hopefully, people are going to ask questions, but if they don't, boy, <laughs> maybe um, show people around the trading community because I don't know if um, people have seen those those trades that we post, the intraday trading alerts. Okay. So maybe show them that, um, okay. and I'm sure by then people will ask questions. Okay, great. And I already start seeing the questions coming through. In fact, I'm looking forward to Thomas says he has a list of questions ready. So, um, so let's let's kick off um, with question number one. Um, how do you calculate uh, projected targets? Okay, that question is from. Um, Zishan, Zishan, I hope I have that that name right. I hope I, I, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Um, so, how do we calculate projected targets? <clears throat> All right, that's question number one. So, let me let me show you how we calculate projected targets. Um, let me bring up an example with a target on it. <clears throat> uh, so, let's start with the with a simple case. Uh, on my screen in front of me, well, actually, you're probably all mostly forex traders. So let me just switch to some forex, uh, uh, to some forex opportunities. Um, give me a moment, everyone. Uh, just switch to some some forex opportunities here. Okay, we'll start off with a simple case. Um, the simple case is uh, of uh, these uh, uh, emerging uh, key levels. Uh, as you can see here, the emerging key levels, the target is just the, the resistance level that we identified, right? So we can see in this picture that we identified a resistance, I think it's Euro half this, on 308.53, um, and so uh, the target is obviously the, um, that, that resistance level, <coughs> okay? Um, when you're starting to look at the completed patterns, the completed patterns are are slightly different. Okay, so uh, let me let me show you how we work out the completed patterns. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly grab a snapshot of my of my screen over here, so I can. Oh, actually, I can do this uh, directly on uh, on this platform on the GoToWebinar platform. So, all right. So, how do we work out the projected target for that? <clears throat> so, what we do is we take the highest point. Away from that, that was identified away from uh, away from that resistance level or support level that was identified. We map that onto the breakout, right? And then what we do is we scale it out of ten based on the significance, all right? So um, so what we do now is over here we multiply by four, divide by six, right? So so that will bring the target region down uh, to this level over here. Right. That's how we work out the the target level for uh, resistance uh, resistance and support lines. Uh, how we do it for chart patterns is slightly different. Let me let me bring up an, an example. <clears throat> okay, here is an example of of uh, a chart pattern. Now, uh, this is a good question. How we do it now? Um, now, the 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 theory uh, has it that what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take the uh, the initial trend prior to the formation of the of the pattern. So you can see uh, quite clearly um, uh, uh, the pattern, and so you can see the initial trend uh, in this pattern. This situation was this section over here, and what we did is we take that initial trend, that size over there, and we map it onto the we map it onto the breakout. Okay, <clears throat> then what we do is we actually scale it by the average quality, 
right? So here it's about 4 out of 10, so if you can imagine we divided it by 2 almost, and this is how we come up with that target region. So uh, we try to be as close as possible to what the theory says around setting uh, target levels, um, uh, but we add our own uh, little flavor to it. So here's another example, uh, USD SEK. Um, we, we take the initial trend, we map that onto the breakout, approximately that size, and then we scale it by the quality. It's almost a kind of divided by two. And that's how we get the, um, the, 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 the target, the target uh, region. <coughs> Errol, and you'll, you'll let me know um, uh, if, uh, if I haven't explained myself uh, correctly. Um, Errol, can you help me out? I see the questions streaming through. Can you help me out and, and call out a few to me? Oh, it seems as though Errol has disappeared. Okay, I'm on my own, it looks like. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. Can you hear me? Yes, I did. Now I can hear you. I can hear you now. Yes, thanks, Errol. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. Okay. All right. So, he has a question. Under the advanced search, right. at key level, there is a quality indicator section such as three point and four point and etc. What does it mean, and how does it work? Okay. So, um, and who is that question from? I see it's from Thomas. Okay, Thomas. All right. So. <clears throat> Uh, Thomas, uh, you're looking at the uh, advanced section over here under key levels. You're seeing the, uh, the, the, the quality indicators, 3, 4, 5, etc. points up to 10 points. Okay, let me bring up uh, some key levels here. Um, what, you will, what you will find is, um, <coughs> uh, let me actually bring up some better examples. Let me see if I can find some, some, uh, some, interesting, some interesting examples here. Okay. All right. So this is an interesting example. So this, uh, this is um, an opportunity that identified on the um, uh, Australian on Australian index, the S&P ASX 200 index, and you can see the quality is four. Now those those points that we're talking about is how often the 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 price graph hit that uh, level. So this is a quality of four uh, uh, or five actually. So we're expecting to see five touching points, right? So uh, we see that uh, if I zoom in over here, the the price I hit that touching point over here. That's one. Um, I believe it took this point into account as well. Two, three, four, and five. Right. So if you set your your uh, touching points, uh, the significant levels uh, higher and higher, you'll, you'll get more uh, uh, levels which have been which have touched their support resistance level. Uh, resistance levels more often. Um, let me see if I can get um, some more some more examples here. Bear, bear with me, everybody. <clears throat> okay, so here's here's another example. Uh, Euro SEC. Okay, so this has a, a quality of uh, a four. It looks like. Okay, so we can see that it's touched it uh, once, two, three, and four times. Okay, that means it's quite a significant level because it's uh, hit that. Uh, that support resistance levels uh, four times. All right, I hope I've answered that uh, that question, Thomas. <clears throat> okay, Len. Yes. Um, on that topic, someone's asking. It's um, August. Is the quality indicator the most important one? Out of the quality indicators. The truth is that there isn't the most important one. It really depends on your style of trading. I can tell you what I believe are the most important ones. Um, so when when I trade uh, technical chart patterns, I like to look at the uh, the breakout and the initial trend. All right. So um, when I look at a pattern like this, whose breakout is very small, right? Uh, you can see that the price kind of went through that level, but it it just kind of touched it, uh, right? It didn't actually break out significantly. That kind of a breakout for me, um, you know, I, I look at patterns like that and I look for a further confirmation signal uh, for a, a more a complete breakout. Um, I find that's, that's pretty good, uh, a breakout. Um, now let me try to find um, opportunity with, with uh, 
maybe with some higher uh, breakout uh, levels. Sorry. Uh, again, this opportunity here on JPY, uh, again, not not significant in terms of uh, in terms of a breakout. Let me just try to find one that has uh, some significant uh, breakouts. Excuse me, everyone, while I uh, fumble through over here. <clears throat> Aha, here we go. Here's a pretty good one, Euro NZD. So I look over here and I see this has a very, very high breakout uh, value. You can see the quality of the breakout on the right-hand side here. Uh, what this tells us is that the the, um, the uh, candle that broke through the support level over here is very significant in size in relation to the rest of the candles. And you can clearly see that, that most of the candles are pretty small. There's a few big ones, but this move through the support level is very significant. Um, that, for me, uh, personally is one of my most important uh, trading signals and confirmation indicators. Uh, I think uh, what I also like to do is I like to add in uh, additional uh, confirmation indicators. Uh, so, for example, I'll show you what I would do in MetaTrader, for example, in this, on, this, uh, on this type of trade, uh, Euro NZD. Uh, I wonder if I can find that on my, uh, on my MetaTrader. Uh, what I like to do is I like to add in... Um, uh, some uh, uh, some other uh, indicators. Uh, I'll show you that now. <clears throat> it's always difficult to do these kind of um, ad hoc um, uh, webinars because I, end, I find myself uh, kind of fumbling around a little bit, but I have to do it in order to answer the questions correctly and completely. Hope you all bear with me. So this uh, Euro NZD opportunities on 15-minute patterns. So um, I'll just switch to my MetaTrader, put 15-minute patterns on, and we should see that opportunity coming up now on here. And what I'm going to do is I also like to add in a confirmation uh, indicator. <clears throat> so I would insert um, a trending indicator. I like to insert a moving average. I like to insert it of 30, 35 candle. And <clears throat> what I look for, in, um, I hope you can all see my, uh, see my MetaTrader screen there. I'll zoom in a little bit. Uh, you can see at the price there was that significant breakout that we spoke about earlier, uh, and uh, and now what I like to do is I like to add in a, 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 a moving average indicator to confirm the breakout. Now what I see is that the moving average indicator is actually moving in the same direction as my uh, as my breakout, and that for me is a confirming signal uh, that um, that this is potentially something I I could I could trade. Um, so it's not only about the quality indicators themselves, it's also about the supporting, the supporting information around it. Okay, shall we move on to the, on to the, next, on to the next question? Okay, Len, um, let's see here. Okay, Osama is asking, how can I filter trading opportunities by quality greater than five? Okay, so that that's pretty easy. So so what you would do is um, inside the order chartist platform, um, you would uh, you would either create a new search or, or filter an existing search, <coughs> um, and then what you would do is you would go into the advanced section, and uh, you would go down to uh, the quality indicator section, and you would drag the little uh, overall quality section up to five and you would click on Save Search, and if everything goes according to plan, uh, you should only have uh, quality indicators greater than, than five uh, coming through on your, um, on your order charter screen. Uh, this, it takes a little while to, to filter, uh, but once it comes through, then it's, it's pretty quick after that. Uh, so here we go. So now you can see all my quality indicators are greater than five. Uh, what you can also do is if you, if you want to sort it, you can actually just click on the heading um, of the of the the quality indicator uh, heading on your on your um, on your trading opportunity section and actually see uh, order the order the um, the opportunities based on based on quality. <coughs> um, I see. Okay. Uh, yeah. So go. Um, Ellen's asking. Yes, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, then. Uh, I was just seeing that Brian was asking where he can get some, some real basic training with regards to the system, uh, and I just thought I'd deal yes. with that. Um, under the trading community section on the right-hand side of the screen, 
uh, you'll actually get if you click there um, on the bottom on the bottom half of the screen I'm highlighting it now for you uh, you'll actually see some introductory videos those are pretty good um, <clears throat> uh, those are uh, they're very short videos they're probably I'm guessing about five or six minutes each uh, so you're not really committing a lot of time and those videos uh, give you a, a very uh, uh, a basic um, overview of each of the function pieces of functionality within the auto charters platform um, certainly if you invest uh, 30 minutes or, or 45 minutes um, into these videos you will have a very clear understanding of, of how to how to trade and how to use uh, auto chartist in your trading Errol, over to you. Okay, um, this is quite a long question mm -hmm. from Heather. Okay. Okay. When you say it will take two or three days to reach a specified level, up or down, mm -hmm. do you mean that we have to take the trade and leave it there for two or three days? But I've noticed that it does not always work this way because of news items. So what do you do? Keep keep it there still? I mean the trade. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know if you got the question. Yeah, so, so, uh, it's a great question. I'm actually just trying to find that. Um, uh, uh, who was that from? From Heather, you say? It's from Heather Hill. Okay. I uh, I can't seem to find that question on my screen, but I will answer it anyway. Um, Heather, I think that um, you ask a very good question. Uh, news events are are the killer of of all traders. Um, <clears throat> trading around news events. Is a is a very difficult thing to do. <clears throat> I I deal with it in a in a slightly different fashion. Um, so when I see the longer term opportunities, um, well, let let me take a step back. Really, when I when I trade, I trade both longer term opportunities as well as short term opportunities. But I trade them in two different ways. So if you're asked, if you're talking to me about um, uh, short-term opportunities, then I would I would almost never trade around news events. So you know, if it's 8:30 a.m. on a Friday or 8 a.m. in New York on a Friday, and non-farm payroll or or jobless claims is about to come out, uh, I I would never take a position. Uh, I just simply avoid it. However, when there are, uh, uh, you know, it, you know, you can't take that same strategy with longer-term opportunities. Let's say you have an opportunity that says it's going to take, you know, two or three days to to hit its forecast level, right? Um, let's actually find one of those opportunities. So let's go into our favorites. Uh, this is my uh, this is my favorite part of my uh, order charter screen. Is the is the our favorite screen? Um, so what we do on the screen is we can actually just quickly try and find um, uh, the the longer term opportunities. Here's uh, that's euro half. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Here's one on odd uh, Swiss franc or uh, daily candles. So these are daily candles here, uh, odd Swiss franc, and and you can see clearly that that this target. Even if it goes towards that target, it's not going to reach it. You know, uh, in the next few days, it'll take a week or two to reach it. Now, this is a very well-formed pattern. Probably another bearish candle, and I would strongly consider taking a position on something like this. Um, but then, what do you do? Because over the next seven or eight days, uh, you will definitely have a lot of press releases and news releases coming out. So. Um, you know, and I'm not sure if this is such an if it's too advanced, but but essentially it's not a question of uh, you know whether to trade something or not, but more of a question of how much money you put on it. So many many uh, traders they decide okay they're going to trade uh, one lot every time they place a trade, or they decide they're going to place uh, ten lots every time they place a trade, right? Depending on your deposit size. It's not the correct way of, of doing things. Um, when you're trading longer term opportunities, whether it's based on auto charters or anything else, right? You could be you could be trading a moving average crossover system uh, on 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 daily candles. 
you can't uh, you can't um, overexpose yourself on the longer term opportunities because you have to be able to withstand uh, greater movements in the market. Uh, so so the way the way um, I do things is on the longer term opportunities. I actually take a smaller positions uh, um, relative to my account size. So um, you know, let's just say. You know, I'm not sure which brokers you all trade with, but um, uh, some brokers you have one mod, one leverage setting uh, for your account. It's you know one to fifty or one to twenty five or one to a hundred or you know some some of you in, in in other parts of the world might even get one to two hundred, right? And then you you trade on your platform, and that's the and that's the uh, margin level you 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 trade with every time. In which case, then what you have to do is you have to adjust your 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 lot sizes, right, or the amount of exposure. Um, other trading platforms, um, uh, they offer you the ability to take uh, smaller uh, positions or, or or big positions uh, from an equity exposure, but less uh, leveraged, right? So w whichever way you you do it. Um, again, I hope I'm, I'm fumbling a little bit, uh, uh, just trying to explain myself uh, without waving my hands, which, are, which Errol will tell you, which is what I normally do. I walk up to a whiteboard and I start drawing things, and I can't do that here. Uh, but what I would do is on longer-term opportunities, I would take smaller positions, whether that's less lot size or less geared. And for the shorter-term opportunities, I would take uh, uh, bigger geared positions, but obviously tighter stops and take profits. Uh, but again, I would avoid... Uh, trading short-term opportunities around news events. Uh, Heather, I hope I've answered uh, you know uh, my strategy around around news events. Okay, then um, we have a question from Steve Davis. Mm -hmm. I have noticed I have noticed that there are often disagreements between direction with favorites and market reports, with our favorites and market reports, mm -hmm. which are confusing. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think you I think you're right. Is that did you say that was from Mark? Um, Davis. Uh, yeah. Okay. So 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 uh, Mark. Yes. Three o four. All right. So so you you are you are you are right. Um, uh, that is getting a bit confusing. And let me and let me clarify uh, uh, some things uh, about auto chartist. So um, <clears throat> what you will find is that if I go into my market reports <clears throat> and that for everybody who doesn't know uh, you get that under messaging and alerts uh, Mark has subscribed to something called uh, the AutoCharts daily market snapshots um, I'm, I'm not sure on which on which instruments you're looking at Mark but maybe it's Forex or London or New York or DAX or whatever it is but I'll just look at the Forex report for now if you if you're looking at the Forex report <clears throat> Um, you will actually find that the market report primarily gives you uh, longer term opportunities okay uh, let's look at this this is an opportunity on on euro dollar in the latest market report the European market report this is a, a four day forecast right um, uh, this is an opportunity below it a USD JPY a 12 hour forecast uh, an opportunity on GBP USD a seven day a seven-day forecast, right? Um, so what you'll find, the market reports give you slightly longer-term opportunities. Uh, and I'll answer your question in just a moment. There's a reason for that. Uh, the reason for that, we used to give short-term opportunities, and then people used to read their emails a few hours late. And then, um, obviously, the email contains a, 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 you know, a static image. Uh, and so people used to call us and say, hey, your image is outdated. Well, it, you know, the truth is that it was it was when it was when the email was sent, it was actually you know up to up to date. But because the person's looking at the email uh, late, um, a few hours later, then it was it was outdated already. So, so we've actually taken the strategy with the with regards to the market snapshot is providing slightly longer term opportunities. So um, now, if you're looking at the uh, our favorites uh, section, you will see that in our favorite section, uh, it's primarily. Uh, certainly when you're looking at different levels of probability uh, it's certainly a lot got a lot more uh, short-term opportunities right so 
you can see there's um, uh, a 60 minute opportunities, uh, a lot of 60 minute opportunities, one or two end of day and four hourly opportunities, but mostly uh, pretty pretty short term uh, short term opportunities. So so this gets back to the same question that Heather asked earlier: is that you know how do you how do you really combine a longer term opportunities with shorter term opportunities? And and I think it really depends on your strategy. I trade both because I I actually don't have a problem with being uh, uh, long and short on an instrument. So, uh, for example, if I thought the short-term trend on, on U.S. Canadian dollar uh, was bullish, um, I would take a short. Uh, I would take a short-term position on it. All right. But if the trend in general was downwards, I would have a, a smaller position um, uh, or less leveraged position uh, going short on U.S. dollar Canadian dollar. So there is no reason. Uh, you know, l l let me actually bring up a like um. I'm going to bring up my Microsoft Paint. I my graphic designer hates it when I go into my Microsoft Paint because I I'm not very a very good artist. But <laughs> let's just say um, this is you know a, a price graph made of of um, daily candles, right? You know, one can clearly see that the the trend for such a, a price graph is is bearish, right? Um, uh, but let's say the price. Uh, let's say you you encounter this price uh, somewhere uh, earlier on, right? So you can see that this this price graph, the, the 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 tendency is bearish. But there is no, you know. So you could, for example, be on a short position. Let's say uh, one lot uh, short on a price graph like this. But there is no reason why one wouldn't be able to go uh, long, you know. Uh, you know, let's say 0.1 lot. You know, at any point in time, to take a, to take into consideration these kind of swings, right? Which, I mean, there's a lot of movement in these upwards and downwards movement there, uh, in 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 price graphs. There's no reason to, you know, to 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 let those go and let the profits go in potential uh, kind of these swing trades up and down. So so yes, there are definitely uh, opportunities um, that seem to. Uh, say opposite things to each other, but what you need to do is you need to look at um, the, uh, the 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 term and the length of the opportunities, and you need to take that into account. <clears throat> okay, then. Mm -hmm. um, right. Hand. Can we trade emerging patterns? What is the success rate for emerging and completed patterns? Mm, yeah. Okay, that's a that's a great question. So <clears throat> let me let me bring up some uh, some examples. Um, Errol, you broke up a bit in the in the middle of that question. So I'm presuming the question is, can we trade emerging patterns, and what is the success rate of emerging patterns? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And he also wants to know and completed patterns, the success rate. Okay, all right. Okay, so so. Let me let, let me show you all something. Um, <clears throat> uh, in my order charter screen right now, I've selected um, uh, <clears throat> the I've selected the, the the types of patterns on which auto charters provides uh, performance statistics, and I'll explain what those performance statistics are actually. But um, so we only provide performance statistics on completed chart patterns. Uh, breakout key levels and approaching key levels. Okay, we do not provide statistics on emerging chart patterns. Let me explain to you why. Let me take everything off my screen. I'm going to bring up some emerging chart patterns for you. Uh, so uh, let me bring up an example where I can actually see this uh, happening quite nicely. All right, so this is a, a little bit old. Uh, this opportunity here, but but as you can see, order chart has identified uh, this chart pattern a few candles ago. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight candles ago. All right, and it thought that the price was moving down, but you can see that the support level was actually uh, trending. Right, it's an upwardly uh, sloping support level. So it's very difficult for us at order charters to provide a target specific level uh, to which we think the price is actually moving to. So this example, uh, 
you know, it happened to have reached this 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 support level, right? Um, but the, the 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 level is really a a moving target, and so we don't provide a target for emerging uh, chart patterns, right? We only provide targets for the three types of patterns I have selected now, which is the completed chart patterns, which you can see here's an example right now, uh, GBP NZD. We provide a, a, a we provide a target level where we think this price is going right to 1.9459. Okay, and similarly uh, for the uh, key levels, we provide a target. So <clears throat> yes, the answer is yes. You can trade emerging emerging uh, patterns, but we don't provide uh, target levels. So your fate is in your own hands, right? <laughs> um, uh, there are <clears throat> uh, many, uh, actually many customers that I've heard of, um, prom I must be honest, they're primarily professional in, in, in nature, uh, not really uh, amateur traders, but professional traders that are able to, um, let's say, take advantage are very short-term opportunities in the market um, that are pretty good at you know a, a getting a pip here a pip there of these swing trades, um, but but at order charts we don't provide uh, those uh, those target levels and that's why we don't provide statistics around them. But if you go back to these statistics, let me select those. <clears throat> Let's say you uh, you trading forex and you want to see what the the performance stats are on the forex market for auto charters. You can click on the performance statistics section, and you can get all the stats uh, for the three types of patterns that on which we give targets, right? Which is the the which is the chart patterns, the breakout key levels, and the approaching and the approaching key levels. Okay. So now um, before I carry on here, I want to let you know that that. The statistics I'll show you now are not indicative of how much money you'll make. Right? How much money you can make on trades is is a separate matter altogether. It is dependent on your exit strategy. Um, it's dependent on your um, it's dependent on your 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 position size. It depends on on a lot of different uh, things. So the statistics that we provide are simply a measure of how often we have hit our uh, target region, right to our target level. So, for example, if we look at the completed uh, key levels, <clears throat> you know, over the last six months we've identified about three and a half thousand of them, of which two thousand six hundred or so, uh, two and a half thousand were correct, which is on average about kind of seventy-two percent uh, correct rate. But, but that's not really the the important stats. The important stats are actually the breakdown, right? So, so you can have a look at the breakdown. Uh, of you know which uh, which uh, patterns and which instruments have performed well over the last six months. And now again, I have to disclaim this because you know past performance might not be indicative of future performance, um, but certainly it gives you an indication of what's been working uh, pretty well lately, right? So, for example, you can see that the opportunities on odds was frank for uh, for completed key level for completed key levels. Uh, breakout key levels has been doing really well at 83%. And so you can have a complete breakdown. Uh, <clears throat> interestingly enough, the hour of the day on which the uh, opportunities are identified is actually very important. You can see we do very well. Uh, this is GMT minus 4. So we do very well uh, <clears throat> during the uh, the European session and not so well during the, the US session. Right. So, uh, and then better again during the Asian session. So, so you can see that that the U.S. session over the last six months has been, you know, a challenging time for auto charters. Uh, and that's actually, you know, most people think that the U.S. is the center of the world with regards to trading. But that that's true for most things, but not for when it comes to FX. When it comes to forex, uh, the center of the world is actually London. And that's actually why we do pretty well during the London sessions, um, because that's when we see a lot of volatility and a lot of liquidity in the market, right? Um, so you know these the the chart patterns and the support resistance levels actually have a chance to play out. Um, okay, uh, so I hope I've I hope I've uh, shown you at least not the statistics themselves, but where to get the stats and a little bit around them. Uh, Errol, can we move on? 
Okay, thanks. Um, yes, you know, some actually a few people are actually asking about our favorites, why they don't see it on their platform. Okay, so um, <clears throat> uh, firstly, I wonder if everyone knows what our favorites is. Our favorites is basically the combination of the trading opportunity section together uh, with uh, the um, what we've done is taken trading opportunities. We've combined that with the performance statistics I've just shown you, and so the our favorites uh, section just uh, basically filters uh, the opportunity not based on the pattern types and everything like you have in trading opportunities, but more based on the prob probability of success, based on the past probability of success. Um, uh, so uh, the, the, the reason you don't see that is because um, every broker partner of ours has a different uh, combination of uh, services that we provide to them, and so your broker might not have subscribed to the Our Favorites uh, section. If that's the case and you think it's useful, uh, you know, then then um, ask your broker to enable it. Uh, it. It is an additional price for the for the brokers. It's not significantly more, but it is an additional price for the for the brokers. Um, certainly, if you can send us the request to support at autocharters.com, we can also try and engage with the broker to to enable that. Uh, for you. However, I also want to point out that if you're trading a limited amount of instruments, you can achieve the same thing as we've got in our favorites by literally going into the performance statistics section and printing out some of those performance stats and then just monitoring the trading opportunity section because um, uh, because uh, that's exactly what the Our Favorites does. So if you look at the trading opportunity section and just cross-reference it with performance stats, you'll be able to achieve exactly the same uh, exactly the same result. Errol. Okay then. Hi. Okay. So there's a few questions around the, like some of the some of the stuff. They're basically asking about the trading community mm -hmm. okay. and the intraday trading analysis. Well, first of all, someone someone was asking about um, the the market reports are um, too long. They're looking for emails with shorter um, time frames. So I think the intraday trading analysis yeah. would be good for that person. Yeah. And so, then another so person's asking how to actually get it. How to actually get the emails? Oh, okay. All right. Okay, so let me. Whew, that's a, a lot of questions. All right, so 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 let me let me deal with the, the messaging and alerts. So, so in terms of uh, the um, the uh, the messaging and alerts, right now we the the reports we're not looking for. We're not going to be providing any shorter term opportunities in the report at this stage. However, um, uh, we have released or are releasing. Uh, well, actually, we made it. We we kind of did a press release about it, um, but we're releasing a. Uh, a, a mobile application for Android um, and for iOS, uh, for so for for iPhones. Uh, Errol will be happy to know, and for Androids, uh, and uh, and we and uh, that is I think about to be released, right, Errol? If I'm not mistaken, and um, and that will basically give you uh, it'll kind of beep at you uh, throughout the day, letting you know when there's a short-term trading opportunities uh, around. In fact, that's based on the our favorite section. So what actually what happens on that on that iPhone app or on the Android app is that it actually sends through um, the the our favorites and streams it to your phone, so you can actually see it on your phone and get alerted to it. Uh, so you don't get a flood of a flood of emails. <clears throat> uh, the other thing you might be interested in is, as Errol mentioned, is on the left hand side you can see something called analysts research. Uh, we have uh, some analysts working for us and during the trading day they actually provide uh, some intraday analysis. So what they would do is they would they monitor auto chartist and actually pick a few uh, trades um, that, that they believe are worthwhile taking and they really add the, the human element to it. And uh, what you can do is you subscribe. You can subscribe to these um, alerts by email by clicking on the messaging and alert section, uh, analyst research, putting your email address in on the top left hand side, and actually uh, clicking save, uh, selecting the analyst research and and clicking save. Uh, um, Oh, in fact, it actually leads perfectly onto this. So, so while while I've got you all on the line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you some links to some YouTube videos. Uh, I'm going to send that through in the chat window, 
and uh, and I urge you all to to have a look at those. Those two videos are a summary, I think, of the last two weeks, Errol, if I'm not mistaken, of uh, how how uh, well our uh, analyst research has done uh, over the last uh, kind of two weeks. Um, Errol keeps updating it every every week. He he creates a new video. It's a new it's a new initiative we've got. Um, so our analyst research, the, the performance is pretty good, and I urge you all to have a look at that, uh, to have a look at those uh, videos and see actually the value in those in those videos. Uh, the same analyst research can not only be received by email, but can also be received through the trading community section on the right-hand side. Uh, if you click on trading community, the intraday trading analysis uh, can be can be seen um, over here in in there as well. It's exactly the same uh, analysis that, that one would get uh, in the messaging and alerts uh, section by email. <coughs> Errol, I must say your choice of music for these videos is is quite interesting. It fascinates me. But but anyway, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sure everyone will agree that it's an interesting choice, but yeah. <laughs> you, uh, you, you sound like you don't like things. <laughs> no, 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 no. I do, I do, I do. It's quite intense, you know. It's like, um, you know, it gets my heart racing. It's supposed to get, it's supposed to get your attention going. Yeah, that's that. It certainly does that. Yes, yeah, it does that. <laughs> okay. Uh, next okay. question, Errol. Please keep in mind that we're already 42 minutes into this presentation, so so we yes, might maybe want to we have just a few one, more. one more question. Yeah, one, one, one or a few, few more questions. Yes, please. Okay. Um, so I just lost the question now. Um, okay, maybe this one. Can we trade binary options with auto trades? <laughs> it's a big question for <laughs> one minute. Yeah, yeah, it is. A, it's a great question. Uh, so, auto chartist. Uh, does have a, a binary options offering, and you all can see my screen. Uh, it does have a binary options uh, a, a platform uh, for one minute and, and two minute and five minute opportunities. Um, however, it is only available through a limited amount of binary options brokers. Uh, we've only taken it to market about uh, a week ago. Uh, it was something completely new because you can imagine that doing chart pattern and horizontal support resistance level identification on one minute charts is is a pretty hefty mathematical task uh, and so it's taken us a while to come up with that but we've done it uh, and it's if you have if you do trade with a binary options broker and you're interested in getting that information uh, you know it would be great if you ask them to contact us uh, but but right now on the market um, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not allowed to mention any broker names on this presentation. Uh, however, if you send us an email to support at autocharters.com, uh, we'll be able to let you know which brokers uh, provide uh, binary options uh, analysis based on autocharters. Do you, have, do you want to answer more questions, or do you think it's time? Um, if there's, if there's, if there is another question that is really important that you think I should, I should answer, Errol, or have we answered most of them in, in, in general? Uh, maybe this question comes up quite often, okay. and people get confused about it. Is yes. the um, how do the times work on the platform in different time zones? Oh, okay, right, all right. So. Okay, so um, as if you can see on the on the top right hand side um, of my screen, I have my time zone uh, set to American New York. <clears throat> now, if you want to set your time zone to to something different, um, let's say you want to set it to uh, I don't know, uh, should we say Europe, uh, Europe London? Uh, you can select Europe London. What you'll have to do is you you need to select it, and you need to kind of log out uh, and relaunch the platform. Um, so, uh, and then and then everything you see on your order charters will then come up in in uh, the selected time zone, right? Um, so, uh, what you need to do is I'm not sure which trading platforms you all are using, but you may want to ask your broker which time zone your your trading platform is in, and then set your order charters to the same time zone as that, uh, rather than your personal time zone, right? So you could be trading you in in the United States. You're personally located in the United States, but your broker might be showing you, let's say, European Central Time uh, data in your in your trading uh, console. So, 
you know, I would I would set my my order chart to the same time zone as your as your trading platform. Uh, similarly, you can change your language on the top right hand side while I'm on the subject. You can you can change your language of of auto chartist. We're constantly adding new languages, but so far I think there's 17 languages in auto chartist, and 13 languages in the messaging and alerts in the email section. And I guess Errol, I guess we can we conclude uh, with, with that. Yeah, I just want to say some people are asking about the recording. We we are recording it and. Um, if all goes to plan, it will be on YouTube by tomorrow. Good. And um, I think we will send out an email about it also. Fantastic. About the recording. Well, this was, well, I, I, am, I must say, everyone, I am so, I'm absolutely delighted that people ask me questions because I didn't have a presentation ready. And when, in the beginning, we had a slow start with no questions, I was panicking because I didn't know what I was going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> the messages, the questions came through thick and fast. So thank you, everybody, for participating. Um, I hope you found it informative. Uh, give us feedback about the, the webinar if you did or you didn't find it informative. If you want another Q and A session like this, if we didn't get to your question, uh, send us an email to support at autochartist.com. We'll be glad to answer your questions then. Uh, thanks, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>